What's up guys, my name's Noah, I make music as Haterade, and you are watching Sonic Academy. Now I understand that having systems and being organized feels sort of anti-artist, but for some of us, it's important for keeping your sanity. <laughs> So here are a few tips that I use in my personal workflow that hopefully can help you guys get a little bit more organized as well. So the first tip is color code and label all of your channels. Color coding and labeling your channels makes it so much easier to navigate through your project and know where everything is. Especially going into an old project you haven't messed with for a while, knowing where everything is right when you jump in is going to be a huge lifesaver. You won't have to go hunt around like, where's this thing and where's that thing? Cause everything's all over the place, all different colors. Like for me, I know exactly where I put everything in every single project. Where's my kick? Boom, it's up here at the top. Where are my vocals? Boom, they're down here at the bottom. Obviously, there are going to be different needs for different projects. Having that same naming format and color scheme and knowing where everything is already, it just, it's a huge lifesaver. Especially if you're working in the studio with a vocalist or another producer and they ask about one specific element, this method makes it so much easier to just go directly to that. Also, for exporting stems, you won't have to label, you won't have to go through and label all of these again when it's time to export the stems. You've already been doing it the entire time that you've been working on it. Not to mention it looks great. It looks a lot better than just having everything just sort of thrown in there. And you don't have to go through and manually do this every single time too. You can have a template already preset with all these channels pre-made with maybe the stuff that you normally use every single time. Like for me, my effects channel, I know I'm going to have a riser, sweep, impact, white noise, atmosphere. I know I'm going to have those in some capacity in every song. And I don't use them all the time, but having those channels already there, I already know where to put it right when I start working on it. The next one is sort through your samples ahead of time. Take some time to go through all of your samples and try to find the best ones. If you're familiar with Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule, it's usually about 20% of your samples are what you're gonna actually be using. And if if you're like me, you probably hoard a bunch of samples anyways, so it's probably maybe even less than that. Maybe it's the 20% of that 20%. But taking some time to go through your sample library and picking out the best of the best samples and then organizing those so you know where those specific ones are is going to be a massive time saver for you. This way, when you need a kick, you go straight to where those kicks are and you know that there are only good kicks in there because you specially picked all of them yourself. The less time we spend digging through our massive sample library, the more time we can spend actually making the music, which is the most important part. So the last one is setting up subfolders for your exports and for your project files. If you produce a lot of ideas, organize them by date. If you produce a lot of different genres, maybe you have those folders separated out by genre. Maybe you produce a lot of jazz or lo-fi or dubstep. It really just depends on your workflow and what you do as a producer. Most important thing is having some sort of system to know where those tracks are in the future when you have to go find them. I've seen some producers actually organize their music by BPM. And you could do it a combination of all of those things. Maybe you have dated folders by a year and within those folders are genre folders or BPM folders. You can get creative with this for however it works best for your workflow, but doing this is the important part. Just throwing everything into a folder that says beats is gonna be a nightmare for you in the future when you have to go through all of those and find that one specific one. Or if you're submitting your catalog of music to a sync library to get placed in movies or TV, they're gonna want that stuff organized, labeled, all that stuff. You don't want to just send them a big old disorganized folder. Nobody wants that. Okay, so here's a quick example of my file system for the sync catalog that I've been working on. So right here we have the in progress tab. This is where we keep stuff for review, stuff that needs to be uploaded to Disco, stuff where we're going to be working on in future sessions. This is where we keep all the in progress stuff that's not finished. Here we keep all of the bounces for the finished projects. So these are all finished projects finished projects ready to be uploaded. This is our sync, uh, the sync company we work with. So we upload it for them into Disco. And then down here is where we keep all the project files for the finished stuff. So this is just one way to keep track of those finished projects. Like I mentioned earlier, you could do this in a multitude of ways. So get creative and have fun with it. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. If it was, consider clicking like on this video and subscribing to Sonic Academy. We're putting out new videos all the time. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video, then you know, smash that like button. 
And if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace!